how knurling is done. This video is for apprentices and people who are new to machining on a lathe. In this video, we're going to talk about the two types of knurling. We're going to discuss different styles of knurling tools, speeds and feeds, how to set the knurling tool up, and an actual demonstration of knurling. If you have a moment, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, a little confession. I am the world's worst knurler. So I asked my buddy Simon to help us out. The voices can be a little difficult to hear because of the mask, so please bear with us. Okay, let's get started right now. The two main types of knurling are cutting and embossing. Cutting is usually done on a CNC machine and it physically cuts the knurling pattern into the part. Embossing uses plastic deformation to form the material to the pattern that's on the knurling tool. These are the knurling tools that you will find in most machine shops. Let's go through and talk about each one. This is the most popular knurling tool. It's a standard embossing style. It usually comes in diamond and straight pattern. You'll find this in most machine shops. This style of knurling tool physically cuts using small chips and is usually used in CNC applications. This is an internal knurling tool. This is a hand knurling tool. If you have a lathe or not, you can still knurl. This is a face knurling tool to knurl the face of a workpiece. This is a scissor style knurling tool, my preferred knurling tool of choice. The reason why is because it's not pushing axially in one direction, it's actually pulling down onto itself. It makes a better, smoother, more even cut. Three wheel knurling tools. If you grab onto the red handle and pull it towards you, it will release the three wheels and push them outward. This is good for small diameters, long lengths, and precision knurls. Custom pattern knurling wheels. These can be made to produce almost any type of pattern that you want on any type of diameter, including angled surfaces. It's lathe setup time. We are going to set the feed rate to 30 thou per revolution and 30 to 60 RPM. How to set the center height of the knurling tool. There's usually a stud or a bolt or a line on the side of the knurling tool. Line it up with the center in the tailstock and you're good to go. Half of the wheel touching the workpiece. Can you see the half of the wheel? Okay. Yeah. So it's going to push the workpiece. We've got the, the tool set, the height set properly. And we're just going to run this in. Now because we're not actually cutting, we're smudging the metal away. Plastic deformation. Let it rotate a few times before you start with another 3 valve. Okay? Now we haven't put any feed on yet. We're going to leave everything engaged and we're going to turn the spindle off. And take a look. And see what the pattern looks like right now. The pattern looks like it's taking shape. I'm going to make a pass now at that depth. And we'll see if this tries to move out of the way. Sometimes it does if things are not tightened down properly. So the spindle goes back on. The feed was never disengaged. And on it goes. Now the problem is, if you disengage the feed, while the spindle is running, you'll end up with a ring right around the nose. And everybody knows what happens. Now because we're going so slow, when we get the wheel halfway across the other end of the workpiece, we're going to slide this out to dry and put it into reverse. At that point, don't be shy about taking an extra three out. Be careful about allowing the wheel off the end of the workpiece. You don't want to allow that to happen, okay? And there we are, we're halfway across. Goes into reverse, and we're going to put an extra three power on there. Okay? And now it's going deeper again. And we're going to go from end to end to end now. Going a little bit deeper until we see the nose start to fall. Because we have a preset pitch on the knurling wheels themselves, we're going to have to make that match with the given diameter on the workpiece. And until that matches, you'll never end up with a good nail pattern. So 
So you keep having to go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, and keep checking it until. At some point, we're going to want to put a little bit of oil on the um, on the pivot side of the wheel, where the, where the wheel's rotating about. We'll see if we can keep the oil away from the main part of the mill if we can. And again, we're in reverse right now. Half of the wheel is off and into forward again, another three pounds. Next time we're actually going to stop the whole machine that it's still engaged and we're going to check the mill part. And again, I'm just going to strip that down with it still engaged. Oh, so as you can see, we've still got ways to go yet, right? That's not a nice diamond pattern mill yet. So here we go. Think forward again. What we're looking for in the end is something similar to this. This could have been a little bit deeper, in fact, but it's reasonable. It'll pass. How's it looking? Getting that, I'm gonna put a little dab of oil on the on the little axles there. Okay. I'm thinking more, yeah. This is the finished neural pattern. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. A big shout out to Simon for helping me make this video. Much appreciated, couldn't have done it without you. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more just like it, check out my YouTube channel Shop and Math. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Well, thank you for watching the video and have a great night.